Howdy there once again, YouTube. My name is Ben Ferriolo, and I'm a beginner amateur seismologist who wishes to become a professional volcanic seismologist someday. Now, I wasn't planning on doing a video today, but it does seem that Steamboat has officially shattered the record of 29 eruptions in one year, which occurred in 1964. Well, people can pretty much forget about 1964 now. The current all-time record is 30 eruptions in one year, which occurred in 2018, and it is still ongoing. It could add a few more eruptions to that total by the end of the year we'll have to just wait and see um it broke the record last night at 1207 a.m pacific time 107 a.m mountain time and which would also be 807 utc december 8th 2018 now i'm just going to show the eruption real quick and then show you the live stream on swarm that i was watching when steamboat erupted at the end of this video now the clip won't have any audio so i'll put it all the way at the end of the video now i'm sorry if i sound terrible right now if i do i'm sick with a cold for the fourth time in the past two months however this one is the worst out of all of them it's so bad i even have a small fever with it nothing major though the fever's going away i'm starting to get better finally at least it's not the flu now i haven't gotten the flu in over 10 to 15 years while being around people with the flu and I've never gone a flu shot. I personally do not believe in flu shots. Of course, unless there's obviously a huge pandemic, much like the Spanish flu, that are killing millions of people, then I, I would understand it. But the fact is that I know how to wash my hands and take care of myself in such a way that I rarely get sick. It was even years that I didn't get a cold. Well, until just recently, I've had almost four of them in the past two months, but beforehand, I haven't had many at all. I don't know why. Maybe my immune system's breaking down? I don't know. Maybe I'm just happening to come across some stronger colds? I don't know. It's very weird. Four of them in two months when I haven't had any for years. Very interesting. Now, here we are in the seismic program waves. I have... YHH near Holmes Hill, YMC near Maple Creek, YMR near Madison River, YNR near Norris Junction, kind of near the Norris uh, or the Steamboat Geyser area, and YPM. And uh, there was an earthquake just prior. So, so really, now just prior to the 30th steamboat eruption, there was an earthquake. Now, I thought that this would lead to an eruption and that this signified a blockage being cleared since steamboat was late for an eruption. However, I do know now that this earthquake did not occur at Steamboat Geyser, but showed up first on station YHH. Here, let me pull this over real quick. Notice you can see where the earthquakes arrived. Definitely occurred at YHH first, and occurred at YNR second. But YNR and YMC saw it equally arrive, so let's go here. So pretty much in this area. So YNR and YMC almost saw an equal arrival time while Holmes Hill saw it first. So that means it'd be closer to Holmes Hill than YMC and YNR, but it'd be almost directly between YMC and YNR. So it occurred right here. And it just so happens that this is pretty much the epicenter for the small earthquake swarm that was seen there recently a couple weeks ago. Now let's just real quick take a look at the steamboat eruption that broke the yearly record. Real quick, since YHH saw it the strongest, here we are at YHH. Let me pull this over just a little bit. And here is that earthquake that occurred. Very interesting uh, characteristics. Very interesting. Uh, Mid-range frequencies does not go above 20 hertz, I noticed. Let me do that real quick. Doesn't really go past 10 hertz. The so dominant frequencies are around 5 to 7 hertz. So it's definitely a mid-range frequency earthquake, not a low-frequency one, though. But still, I thought it was very interesting. Happened between Norris Geyser Basin and the Maple Creek area, but happened closer to Holmes Hill. So here we are at YNM, which is the station that resides pretty much right next to Steamboat Geyser, that picks up these uh, seismic traces really well from the hydrothermal eruptions. Let's go down. Oh, nope, I'll just do this here. Let me pull this down, since you already know it's YNM. Okay, here's the earthquake that occurred real quick. There it is right there. Very high frequencies for that one. That was very weird how YNM picked up a much higher frequency range than anything else. Now, real quick, let's do 55 or 50 hertz uh, for the maximum frequency range for the spectrogram. And you can see that is where it started right here. Now, let's go back real quick. Here's where it started at 807 UTC, December 8th, 2018, the record-breaking steamboat eruption. How about 1800 or it happened about 80706. Sorry if I said 18. It's 80706. Let me move forward just a little bit, and that's when it started. The maximum amplitude count for the entire eruption was during this burst right here, and is about 
I'm going to say maybe 11,000 amplitude count because it goes beyond 10,000 right here. Here's 10,000. Here's 5,000. So I'm going to say probably about 11,000. And then it died down. Almost looked like the eruption was going to end. And it started erupting more and more and more and more. And then slowly built, slowly built towards another eruption. But so I don't know. So it was one eruption the whole time. But it almost looked like there was two eruptions going on. I don't know. Very weird. But the the main sequence, or actually this first sequence right here, went to about 11,000 amplitude count. But check out the rest of it. Check this out. It was pretty weak. It only went to, let's see, beyond 5,000 right here. So I'm going to say 7,000. Maybe the main eruption here went to about 7,000. While this went to about 11,000. That's pretty weak, guys. I'm pretty sure that is probably the weakest steamboat eruption we have seen since it started in 2018 in March. That's pretty weak. So I don't know why it would be that weak, and I'm pretty sure that each eruption since early November is getting weaker and weaker and weaker, but I don't know what that could mean. I don't know. There are a few eruption bursts here that we have seen recently. So I don't know. Maybe there's blockage. Maybe that's why this earthquake happened right here. See, yeah, here's that earthquake, and just not too much longer later, there's the eruption. Notice that? All right, now let's go into the spectrogram real quick, take a look at this eruption. There it is, right there. Now let's go to the spectra. See the dominant frequencies of this steamboat eruption. Now since these are surface vibrations, they're going to be pretty high. That's usually what we see for steamboat eruptions, around 35 hertz or so, and then dips down right around 40. So, yeah, definitely steamboat eruption. We got it, guys. It broke the record. Now this steamboat eruption was smaller than most of the ones that we have seen in 2018, but it did last quite a while. Let me real quick, I want to do something real quick. Let me go, let's see, start at 807, right? So let's, it goes down to the normal amplitude count right around, I'm going to say, let's see, there's 4,000. Usually it's not 4,000. Let's see, so about 1007. I'm just going to say two hours. Let's go to 1007. No, let's go back up here. 37, so maybe about an hour and a half. It lasted maybe about an hour and a half, almost two hours. So it was pretty long of an eruption. And I notice sometimes when they are very strong, the stronger ones do not last as long as the weaker ones. So just because it looks weaker doesn't mean that it's putting out less water. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? So Steamboat has erupted a total of 30 times in 2018. 2018 is now the most active year ever on record for the largest active geyser in the world. However, I do believe this eruptive period could be approaching its end. Don't chop my head off, guys. I said could be. And, you know, I'm thinking that it's more likely it will continue for a while. But I'm thinking this eruptive period could be reaching its end. This eruption that occurred was the smallest out of almost all of them that occurred since it started back in March of 2018, but it lasted quite a while. It almost seems like the past few eruptions have been getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. But regardless if it ends or not, Steamboat has officially broken the record. Now I have updated my Steamboat 2018 page on my website, so go check that out if you wish to see all of the plots for every single Steamboat eruption of 2018 including the most recent. Just go to the link that is under my email address in the description box below, hover over the Seismic Events tab on my website, and click Steamboat Geyser 2018. So what do you think? Will the eruptions continue into 2019, or is the eruptive period ending? Who knows? Now the year is not over yet, guys. I am thinking it will erupt two more times before the year is over. Now I'm going to quickly show what I was watching last night when Steamboat erupted. The following is the live stream on the program Swarm for Seismic Station YNM, which was resides right near Steamboat Geyser. The top stream is the seismogram plot and the bottom is the spectrogram plot. Please note that the frequency range extends all the way to 50 hertz on the spectrogram plot, not 25 hertz like it automatically does, simply because Steamboat eruptions carry some pretty high frequencies so I set it to 50 hertz. Now there is no audio for this part, this clip that I'm going to show, and all of what you are about to see is the entire Steamboat eruption, pretty much the entirety of it. There was a quick burst when it started, and then the main eruption occurred. This is the end of the video after the clip, so have a great day, guys. I will be back again soon. God bless, and remember the truth is considered hate or fear to those who hate or fear that specific truth. See you later, guys.